And so let's talk about this. You know, we've heard so much about it, right? Contact tracing. So explain this to our viewers out there, how exactly this all actually works and plays out. This is good old detective work, right? What, what you do is you find someone who is positive, who has the virus, and then you try to find out everyone that they've been in contact with. And in that way, you can control the spread and you kind of box in the virus. Um, but this is detective work. So it's a lot easier to just think about this is a, a episode of SVU more than a, a, a fancy public health strategy. So you have experience with this, right, yourself, with actually tracing people with an illness. So what is that experience like? How do you go about it with these detective skills that you're talking about? Well, it's going to be different with COVID-19 because we are isolating and we're not, we're still under stay-at-home orders. But, I mean, this is just basic shoe leather epidemiology. It's calling people. It's finding people. It's doing all you can to get someone uh, aware that they have been exposed to the virus. And, and that's really what we're trying to do. Um, it, it works. It works. Uh, it's worked with HIV and chlamydia and gonorrhea. And it's also worked with um, recent sudden outbreaks of vaccine controllable diseases like measles. Um, but in all of these cases, um, yeah. we've had much greater testing. And, and that's a real key. It's contact tracing, is it's testing and contact tracing. It's like Tom and Jerry. Um, either one by themselves isn't that compelling, but you need both. Right. So when you look at other, we, we also look to other countries who experienced this before us, right? So, for example, you look at South Korea and they used this contact tracing and they use it to great success. So can we see that play out here in New York City, the same methods that they actually used? So South Korea got out real fast uh, with testing. They were doing 20,000 tests a day. They were, um, when, I mean, just factually, when U.S. leaders were downplaying uh, the threat of this virus, uh, South Korea was already talking about the testing chain, how to make sure they had enough reagents, how to make sure they had enough tests. Um, and that's where we're behind the curve. So through our stay-at-home yeah. orders, if we can suppress the virus to a point that we can get testing to where it needs to be, and then you can test folks, you can trace their contacts, you can test their contacts, that's where we're gonna be able to get ahead of it. But without available testing, um, this becomes much harder. You know, I, I covered Ebola, especially when it was here in New York City, the very few cases. This seems a little different, right? Contact tracing seemed easy for them because there were so few cases. We are talking thousands and thousands of cases here. So is it even possible? It is possible. Um, I think that's the good news is we can do it. It's a question really about the testing. Now, the, the big change here is asymptomatic spread, right? Because take something like HIV um, or gonorrhea, you, you're not gonna get gonorrhea walking through a Walmart. Um, it just doesn't transmit that right. way. But there could be someone that you encounter that you know has no symptoms. And so because they have no symptoms, they're never going to be sick and therefore they're never gonna get the test and then the contact tracing won't start. So that means that we, we need to test folks who are not sick. We need enough tests to and, test. And we only, have a, we, we only have a few seconds left. I just want to get to the cons of the actual tracing apps. Uh, people have been concerned about a violation of privacy here, right? HIPAA violations and their health records getting out. So is there a concern there? Is it warranted? Um, if on, on the app side, in this country, you know, individualism, privacy, freedom, these are values for us. And the idea that we could kind of roll out a national app that would – um, use our phone to trace folks um, that could, in the U.S., definitely have some privacy concerns. Understood. Okay, Mr. Castrucci, we thank you so much for your time this morning, your expertise on this important topic that I think we'll be talking about in the days and weeks ahead to get everybody back up and running. Thank you for your time and stay safe to you, okay? Thank you.